Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a stroll down Wisteria Lane. We all know that I can keep a secret. Let's see how many secrets Lisa Gibbons can squeeze out of our creator and the cast of Desperate Housewives. There you are. Uh -huh. I was told to go behind the picket fence. That way you can understand who's alive and who's dead. Okay. <laughs> we are desperate, desperate, aren't we, for the Desperate Housewives. We're addicted. It's our guilty pleasure. Then there's Stephen Culp, Rex Vandekamp, who, as you know, likes to be sexually dominated. <laughs> Which does completely horrify his wife, Brie, played beautifully by Marsha Frost. <laughs> oh, go for myself. With, absolutely with the perfect flip, and so perfect that she has been said to be almost laminated. <laughs> Next to her is Doug Savant, Tom Scavo. <laughs> And it changed the lives of, of, I would say, pretty much all of you, all of whom have been wildly successful and been a part of so many wonderful projects. But when a project like this happens, and it's got that, <laughs> that white hot... <laughs> <laughs> I covered my mic. <laughs> no, we need to put that through the dishwasher with the handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, that Marsha, who is so beautiful and so flawless and so unbree like apparently, in your real life, oh, yeah. <laughs> which I think is a lovely compliment. Yes, thank you. Are you, <laughs> are you really messy? I'm so messy, it's awful. Yeah. But now, most of you know that she's trained as a clinical psychologist, don't you? That's like she's studied and like for real. If you had Brie as a client, <laughs> what would you tell her? Um, get it on with your husband, baby. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, oh, God, I'm so serious about that other subject. I can't even make a joke. I think she's just highly neurotic. I don't think she's, you know, psychotic or anything crazy. I would just lend her an ear and, you know, guide her along. But now, if the son, if Andrew is gay, mm -hmm. and... The, the pool scene with the naked being naked under the water, it's a pretty clear indication that something was going on, mm -hmm. Martin. So, coming from her kind of moral superiority, how is Brie going to take to, you know, possibly a gay son? Wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> She's Let's just say that somewhere in my past, there is a scene in my life with my mother and a Christian counselor telling me he could cure me <laughs> and I, I'm going to be able to write this just fine. <laughs> it's a basic question, but let's, let's throw it to, to one of the guys. Stephen, why does it work? Why does this show work as well as it does? Because um, he's on it. Yeah, aside from the fact that I'm on it. Um, <laughs> I, you know, the short answer is that I think that it's really entertaining. Uh, it's well written. Uh, the cast is great. It, it's well produced and directed. It moves fast. It's got comedy, drama, mystery, everything you want. And I think people want to find out what's going to happen next in the story. And I think that's, that's the real short answer. It's entertaining. But then you can also go farther than that, too. I mean, I think a lot of what happens with these people is sort of far out and heightened as we get, is that it's, I think there's things that in people's lives that everybody can relate to. I mean, just in, in our story, I mean, there's the whole thing of, I mean, how do you keep 
passion, love alive over 18 years of a marriage. You know, what happens when you're in the middle of your life and you've, you're trying to find passion again mm -hmm. somewhere? Um, I think there are things like that about all the characters that people can tune into and that makes it more than just a simply entertaining show. But the bottom line is that it's just fun to watch. It's addictive. It is addictive. There's no question about that. Marcia, it's been said that this show reflects more accurately because of Mark's mom um, and, and her you know, idea of what was really going on, more accurately the way women are with each other and our hopes and our disappointments and the private parts of us that we keep secret. Do you think that's true? You, is that how you are as a woman? I mean, are there things that you don't share? Well, I don't think these women actually do talk to each other very much. And, you know, their, their lives are very separate. And That's what I'm saying, right? Oh, no, I tell my girlfriends everything. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding? <laughs> no, my life is completely different. I, I wouldn't survive without my female friends. So I think it's really different. I, what do you think, Felicity? I mean, it's just very different because you're on set and... and like we've had scenes where you're like, you give me that tell me look, and I'm like, you know, uh -huh, and uh -huh. so it, it's very different. Huh? Because <laughs> coming I, from a soap, I would think that would be like. Yeah, that's basically second nature to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know. No, what I think we're talking about, about the first one. <laughs> the original Gardner was 18 in the pilot, and and he was really shy and. He was really, uh, and, and one of our producers was like, Ava, you've got to help him come out because the J John the gardener is a very yeah, sexual. Yeah, get your facts right. <laughs> 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 John the gardener, there has to be a reason why I would leave this, you know. He's very handsome. And so, um, so when.